think I'll uh, get to my first slide. I think uh, what Neeraj was saying, it, it you know very well goes on with what uh, at least most of the schools, the factual, the learning which is more informative, that is what is happening and what we believe is, do we need schools where we are not talking about practical approach to learning and if we are talking about kids of the same age group, so when we are talking about kids who were born from let's say January 2002 to December 2002, they all have the same ability to absorb certain content and uh, you know, equally perform in different subjects. Does, is that assumption a true assumption? Maybe not because we have kids with varied abilities. Some would be smarter in you know, or uh, some would be more capable in absorbing some sort of content. The second assumption is uh, can, can we get the best teacher accessible to every kid? And I thought you know, we, we had seen a wonderful presentation and an example where it is possible for medical ed education. Is it not possible for school education? So do we need uh, kids to go to schools to learn what is A plus B whole square? I don't think so. You know? We don't need kids to you know, go to the school uh, considering all the traffic and pollution and they are going there and learning A plus B whole square is blah, blah, blah. So that is not what we are talking about. So then it, it, it again raises the question, why do we need schools? Of course, you know, technology has to develop and we have to evolve to a place where this fundamental question is raised, what do schools offer? What is it that a school? So when we ask this question, what comes as an answer is we need schools for experiential learning. You go and practice. You go there and you actually test out things. You go and interact with your friends there. You know, you, know, you go to a school to play football. And if that is the case, next comes the thing because our education system is more of more attuned to an examination system. We are talking about tests and that is the you know, biggest irony that we have. Uh, to share an example, so one of our, uh, you know, my time JE toppers had come to our center and then, so JE topper, all India whatever, rank 1, 4 and uh, he comes in and says, oh, is this how a motor works? So I'm sure he had cracked all the, you know, irritative problems of the JE books that we usually solve. And he says, ah, motor aise kaam karta hai kya? I, I, I now understand. And uh, that is the irony with most of us. In fact, when it, it took me about two days to make my first DC motor. In spite of, you know, being confident of being able to crack most of the problems, the so-called theoretical problems, when it comes to application, there is something fundamentally missing in our system. And that is what uh, has to change if from tomorrow we say JE is going to have a practical part where you have to actually demonstrate things. I think a lot of the so-called, you know, the paper pencil forms of evolution and testing would themselves change. Now this comes the most important because I have been in this field for almost over four years and kids, so earlier it was you could enter into a classroom and you know give whatever you want but now kids demand joy, they are not asking, they are not requesting, they say it has to be fun, it has to be enjoyable and when this comes in then it means because teachers are competing against the Xboxes, teachers are comp uh, competing against the Playstations. So, and then, then comes, you know, you want kids to learn, but then it has to be fun. It, it just can't be, you know, you have to learn for the heck of it. There were some fundamental things, so I'll just share some examples. So first example is, this is a game on nutrition. We want kids to learn about nutrition. Uh, we looked at, you know, what kids really enjoy doing and playing, and then we saw they actually like this game on trump cards. So why not we create a game on that? And there you have, so you have food items and then you have different ways in which, you know, they actually play it like a trump game, it's an exchange card game. And then this is a 30 minute game and then you see how kids enjoy and what they rattle out. So they, you know, we get phone calls from parents saying, hey, this, my kid says 5670, some new G is talking about, what is it, what did he do in the class? It was nothing but you know playing some game where he is talking about vitamin A in spinach. 
So this is like a typical one. The second one that we looked at was uh, kids learning integers. And we had to look at the traditional snakes and ladders game. And so you have the negative integers at the bottom, the positive integers at the top. You have dice which has plus and minus and let them play. A routine session takes maybe you know a couple of uh, two or three hours for them to understand this. But this in in fraction of that time they are able to understand it. This is uh, one approach. So this is one of the basic challenges. You, know, you challenge a bunch of kids and say, why don't you construct towers using simple material like paper and then you get different approaches. Which is again challenging the basic thing which is about one question has one single answer which is not the case mostly in real life. This is one <laughs> innovation of how can you have call conferencing in a regular classroom? All made using basic material. <laughs> this experiment works with the so-called international schools, the strongest structure which can take weight. I think this, this has been like phenomenal. Uh, the, uh, one of the things which probably didn't have time to cover is how has the results been when people have been experts to experiential learning? I think uh, you know, talking about statistics, etc., that is not what I'm excited. But we've seen in government schools where language is a barrier, so English becomes a barrier for them to learn science, and we've seen it phenomenally increases. That we've uh, we've been working with these corporation schools in Vijayawada. It has doubled in those. But when it comes to uh, the basic thing, you know, this example which we give again and again is about do we have systems which can actually test is the kid learning or not? And that is the fundamental. There are few systems evolving, but there has to be more work done in which we are able to actually have systems which make kids demonstrate that they have learned. And it is not in the form of a paper and pencil. Thank you. All the best to you.